Hello and welcome to a new learning screen tutorial. And in this tutorial you will learn how to create this 3D abstract manipulation in Photoshop. To create this manipulation, I have break down this tutorial into three major steps. So, in the first step we will learn to create a texture. Then we will create simple 3D model inside the Photoshop. And applying texture to the 3D model. And in the last step, we will combine multiple images into a single image. So, without wasting your time, let's jump straight into the Photoshop. To do this manipulation, you will need Photoshop CS6 extended, or higher version of Photoshop. First, let's go ahead and create a new document, which is 2000 by 2000 pixels. And the resolution will be 300 pixels per inch. And click create. So I'm going to unlock my layer. And add a new adjustment layer called gradient. Not this one, we're going to add this, gradient fill. In the gradient fill properties, make sure gradient style is linear and change the angle value to 0 degree. If we go up here and double click in the gradient bar, we can edit the type of gradient we're using. Here you've got some pre-made gradients. I'm going to select this black and white to start with. Now go to this gradient type and select noise. In the noise gradient type there's a few different parameters you can adjust. So you can adjust roughness, which is how sharp these aspirations are. Let's increase it a little bit. Click OK. OK again. Now, I am going to come down and add an adjustment layer of black and white. So this black and white adjustment layer will allow you to choose the light levels of all the different colors. Here I am trying to increase the contrast and bringing the details as much as I can. Looks fine, let's minimize it. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and merge these layers. While holding down the shift key and click to select the first layer and the last layer you'd like to merge. And right click one of them and select merge layers. So now, I'm going down here, and add the gradient map adjustment. Click on this bar, and select one of these black and white gradients. If you double click on a color stop, or you click on this color option here, you can choose any different color. So I'm going to just set a blue color. Now select another color stop and select the red color. By the way, here I am choosing blue and red color, in order to match the color with photograph environment. Now, if you click on this red color stop, and then click anywhere, between these stops, you can paste that red color. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue as well. Here I am trying to bring red and blue colors equally. Click OK. Now, let's merge these layers again. I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J on Mac and Control J on PC. Now let's change the blending mode to color band. Now, our texture is almost ready, but I'm gonna add one more adjustment layer that matches the color with the background color. Let's go ahead and add hue and saturation adjustment. Now, I want to change only this red color to the little orange color. So select the red channel from the drop down menu. And change the red color by adjusting the hue. Now, I want to change the blue color, so select the blue channel, and again change the color from the hue slider. Let's minimize it. I'm going to quickly merge these layers. The texture looks fine. You can save it. But for me, I want these lines to be a little bigger. To do that, press Command T on Mac, or Control T on PC, and now scale it up. That you can see, lines are looking bigger now. This is totally optional. Our texture is ready. Let's save it. I'm going to save it in JPG format. You can also save it in PNG or bitmap format. And make sure quality set to maximum. Hit OK. Our first step is done. Let's move on to the second step. First, let's save our current workspace, because we are going to change our workspace in 3D. So, we might need this current workspace in the future. To save it, come to the top menu, click on the window. Workspace, then come across, scroll down and click on new workspace. I'm going to call this workspace, 2D. Click save. We are ready to move on. Next. I'm going to create a new document. 3000 by 3000 pixels. Resolution, 300 and the background content will be black, and create. Now I am going to create a new layer, and go to the tools panel. Take the pen tool, and I'm just going to quickly draw and drag that, to create a very irregular path or shape, or kind of abstract design. When I finish, I will press, Ctrl T, or just right click somewhere inside the path, and select free transform path. I'm going to make it very smaller, and keep it in the center. Now go to the top menu, and in the 3D menu, select, New 3D Extrusion from Selected Path. At this point, Photoshop will ask, if you would like to switch to a 3D workspace. 
Select yes, because if we want to switch back into our old workspace, don't worry. We have already saved it. So select yes for now. As you expect, it extrudes this shape into a standard extrusion object. First of all notice, the tool options for the move tool is here. We will select this first one, to rotate the 3D object. Let's go ahead, and look at our 3D panel. Here it really fills out with a lot of stuff. We are not going to worry about any of that stuff right now. We are going basic here. So first, let's select this layer 1, which is actually our 3D model. Now go to the properties panel, in the tabs up here, we're going to the second tab, which is deform feature. So I have an option here for extrusion depth, I can extrude back and forth. In this case, I want to make it longer. Now, if you scroll and go down here in the bend option, and if you go to this horizontal angle slider, we can bend our object, left to right. Let's bend it all the way to minus 360 degrees. There we go. Now let's rotate the object and see, how it looks from different angles. By the way, there is another way to change the camera viewing angle. If we use this little widget down here, we will find there is three different option here. So if we click on here and drag, we can orbit our 3D camera. If we click on here and drag we can dolly, which means to zoom in or zoom out. And so if we click on here and drag we can pan our 3D camera. As you move around, notice the ground plane. If you don't want to see the ground plane, we can hide it by going into the view menu, under show, and deselecting the 3D ground plane. Next, we will set up the texture to wrap around our extruded 3D object. To do this, go here in the 3D panel, under the layer 1, make extrusion material active. Here you can see, in the properties panel, under the material. You can change color, let me select a different color, like red, but anyway, we don't need to worry about that. Now, what I'm going to do is, click on the texture icon, and select, replace texture. Now, we will find the texture file that we previously created and saved. Looks amazing. Now I am going to increase the glow a little bit. Next, you may notice the shadow here that being cast, and we can disable that by going and selecting the 3D object, and in the properties panel if we deselect these both options, the shadow goes away. Looks really nice, let's save it with a transparent background. Now go to the layer panel. Here we have our 3D object layer, and black background layer. I'm gonna hide this background layer. Now go to the file menu up here, and save as. I am going to save it in PNG format, and giving a name 3D ring, and hit save. One of our 3D rings image file has been saved, now we need another 3D ring image, for that, we're gonna use this same 3D object again, but this time, from a different angle view. Now I'm going to increase the extrusion depth, which will make it a little wider, and bigger. Alright, everything looks fine. Now let's save it again. Again go to file menu, save as, select file format, PNG, and I will call it, 3D ring 2. Hit save. Now, again we are gonna create something interesting shape from this 3D object. So, go to the 3D panel, select the object, and up here in the properties panel, go to the second tab, where you can find deform features. Let's start with, taper. I'm gonna set it 0%. Now go to twist, and set value to minus 144 degrees. Now let's change the camera angle, here I'm trying to find the proper angle. I want to make it like, this abstract object is swirling around our model back and forth, and kind of surrounding her. So here, I'm rotating my camera and positioning a 3D object to the proper place. I think this looks fine. Let's save it as well. Go to the file, save as. Select file format. I am gonna call it, 3D twist. Alright, we have finished our second step. Now let's move on to our third and final step, where we gonna assemble all the images, manipulate them, and create an amazing abstract artwork. Before we begin, you can see our workspace has been changed into a 3D workspace. Next, I will switch to the workspace, that we previously saved. Now, let's open the model's image first. Go to the file menu, and open. We got a photo, but we don't have a space on the left or right of it to add anything. So what we are gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead, and go to the crop tool. Hold down shift and alt key, you should be able to crop it in perfectly from both sides. Hit OK. That will create a new image size now don't worry, because you have the blank bars on the side on the left and the right. What we're gonna do, is we're going to grab our marquee tool, we're gonna select a part of the image, that we want to fill out with background. Be careful not to go over the arm or any body part. Then we're gonna go here in the edit menu, we're gonna go to fill. Select content aware from the drop down list, and hit OK. Looks nice, now let's fill out the other side. But want to be careful, not to get the hair. Again go to the edit menu, and then fill. 
content aware selected. Hit OK. This method might not work all the time, it depends on the background. As you can see, there are some areas which are not well done. Have a look at this, we need to fix it carefully. So let's go ahead and take the patch tool. Select and drag it over to another just blank area of the background. You can also use the clone stamp tool. Here I am trying to remove patch marks by using the patch tool again and again. As you can see content aware and patch tools did a pretty good job, you can go with it, but the edges in the hair are something that we need to fix, and you can fix this very easily by using the clone stamp tool, right? So simple just sample this area and paint. Take a sample by holding alt, click and start removing. Looks fine. I am going to rename this layer, just want to keep everything organized and easy to understand. Next, let's go ahead and open up our 3D ring image. Now to copy this image, just press Ctrl A to select the entire image. And press Ctrl C to copy, and then go to the model picture, and press Ctrl V to paste. Let's scale it down by pressing Ctrl T to bring free transform control, and resize it. Here I'm trying to adjust its position, because as you can see in the model image, her hair is glowing because of the light that comes from her right direction. So I want to make this 3D ring as a light source. Let's rename this layer, and then I'm gonna duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl J. Change the blending mode to color dodge. Let's rename this layer as well. Next, I'm going to open another 3D ring image. And repeat all the processes that we did with the first 3D ring image. Copy. And paste. Free transform. Adjusting the position and the rotation. Rename it. And Ctrl J to duplicate. Change the blending mode to color dodge. Decrease a little bit opacity. And rename it. Alright, now let's open up our third image, which is 3D Twisted PNG file. Repeat the same process with this image as well, just copy and paste. Free transform. Adjust the position. Rename it. Now, let's make these 3D objects glowing. I am going to create a new layer. Call it Glow. Now take the brush tool. Hardness 0. Decrease the flow amount. And choose the light orange color. Change the blending mode to color dodge. And start painting. Now, create another new layer. And again with the brush tool, start painting, but this time change the blending mode to linear dodge. You can also experiment with other blending modes, but I am happy with linear dodge. Looks pretty good, but I want this glowing yellow light to be a little red. So to do that just select the glow layer, now go to image menu, adjustment, and hue and saturation. Let's change the hue a little bit. Hit OK. So we are done. Here is the final result. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.